The future has begun. After we were granted the privilege of marveling at the first spectacular images of the James Webb Telescope a few weeks ago, we now gaze spellbound at those galactic secrets that the technical device will uncover in the coming years. As the most powerful space telescope of all time, Webb will give us insight into the early days of the cosmos and help to detect habitable exoplanets. However, one question in particular needs to be answered. What undiscovered entities are at the edge of the observable universe? And what natural factors limit our view of the stars? Want to know what researchers have to say about this exciting topic? Then stay tuned and make up your own mind. Are you excited about groundbreaking discoveries and unique spectacles in the cosmos? Then remember to subscribe to Simply Space and click the bell for regular updates on these compelling topics. Show us with a thumbs up that we can keep you engaged with the content of our posts. Our Eye in Space To understand the revolutionary insights that the use of a space telescope can provide, it's first worth taking a look at some of the milestones of Webb's predecessor, Hubble. Launched into space on April 24, 1990, Hubble provided us with images of galaxies in unprecedented detail. Away from the famous Hubble Deep Fields, the instrument allowed us to take an in-depth look at the acceleration of cosmic expansion even distant supernovae could be analyzed for the first time with the help of the space telescope. Last but not least, Hubble provided evidence that the centers of nearly all galaxies are graced by supermassive black holes. However, if we now compare the performance of the space telescope with the potential of Webb, it becomes clear to us that the joint construction by NASA and ESA only exposed the tiny tip of the cosmic iceberg. In fact, Webb is up to 100 times more sensitive to electromagnetic waves than its predecessor. Specially designed for infrared astronomy, the instrument, which weighs over 6 tons, is able to let its technical eye wander from the red part of visible light to the mid-infrared spectrum. Why this is so important for deciphering the universe becomes clear when we recall the cosmological redshift. In simple terms, light originating from distant and thus early regions of the cosmos is shifted into that very infrared region. This light has the characteristic property of passing through interstellar gas clouds much better than visible light. Equipped with its special capabilities, Webb is thus expected to target the first luminous objects and galaxies born in the first millennia after the Big Bang. To illustrate Webb's often cited capabilities with a comprehensible example, NASA points to the following. From Earth, the space telescope would be able to register the heat of a bumblebee on the surface of the moon. But what is the technical background behind these amazing capabilities? First and foremost, there is the massive primary mirror. Composed of 18 individual, perfectly matched segments, the mirror has a diameter of 21 feet. The individual components are coated with an extremely thin layer of gold. The reason for this is that gold reflects infrared light significantly better than other metals. For web to work properly, it must be kept cool at all times. This in turn is accomplished by the five-layer sun shield, which when folded out makes it the size of a tennis court. The equipment is permanently cooled down to minus 369 degrees Fahrenheit. This ensures that the telescope's sensitive instruments are protected from incident solar radiation. If major complications do arise, fingers are crossed. Webb's target orbit around the Lagrange point L2 is about 1 million miles from Earth. As a result of this great distance, no manned repair missions can be completed. So now that we've had a brief look at the technical makeup of the space telescope, let's turn our attention to another exciting question. What will Webb get to see as part of its science mission? The Observable Universe as mentioned earlier, Webb will analyze the first luminous formations of the cosmos in the coming years. Given the telescope's deep look into the vast expanse of space, an intriguing question arises. Will Webb be able to observe the edge of the universe? And does such a thing even exist? According to our current state of knowledge, we don't know how big the universe is. Due to the gigantic dimensions of the cosmos, we cannot see its edge, if it exists at all. 
Also, the question about the form of the universe remains unanswered. That area we can see from our point of view is appropriately called the observable universe. Assuming that the cosmos is isotropic and homogeneous, or in other words, that it always presents itself to the observer in the same way, independent of his location and direction of observation, this results in a spherical observation area around the Earth. However, the distance up to the observation horizon is now thought to be more than 13.8 billion light years. It's true that the Big Bang happened approximately 13.8 billion years ago. However, we must also consider the constant expansion of the cosmos. Since distances already covered have subsequently become longer, the distance to that optical barrier is therefore 46.6 billion light years. The most distant objects in the firmament were, at the time they emitted that light, only 40 million light years away from our blue home planet. However, since these entities have long since crossed the event horizon, it's impossible to say anything about their current processes. The event horizon indicates how far an object may be away from us at present, so that its light can still just reach us in the infinite future. As a result of these natural constraints, structures exist in the universe that we will never see. The Edge of the Observation Horizon Among the most distant and thus oldest galaxies tracked down so far is GN-Z11 in the constellation of the Big Dipper, about 13.8 billion years old. This gravitationally bound cluster is only 4% the size of our home galaxy, with its star count corresponding to only 1% of the Milky Way. First discovered in 2016, GN-Z11 has since earned the title of the oldest known galaxy and the most distant known structure in the cosmos. As a result of the expansion of the universe, the distance between GN-Z11 and Earth is about 32 billion light years. And this is where the future use of the James Webb Space Telescope comes into play. Once again, as a reminder, the technical equipment can operate in the mid-infrared spectrum. And basically, the closer an object is to the observation horizon, the more redshifted the radiation we can observe from it. Or in other words, the closer it is to the edge of the observable universe. For those entities that are directly on the observing horizon, the redshift is actually infinite. The popularly cited assumption that such objects move away from us with the speed of light, however, is wrong, because actually they drift away from us with more than threefold the speed of light. But how is this possible at all? Doesn't such a speed contradict Einstein's theory of relativity? The answer is no. To understand this, we have to consider the characteristics of cosmic expansion. Because in fact, it's not a movement in space. Rather, space itself is expanding. Beyond the observable universe Given our limited view of the stars, a central question arises. What lies beyond the observable universe? The sobering answer is, even the James Webb Telescope will not be able to decipher this great mystery. Scientists can only conjecture concerning this exciting topic. One theory says that the regions of the cosmos invisible for us are built approximately the same as those areas we can see. As is well known, it's often assumed that the universe is an infinite structure. But what does the oft-quoted concept of infinity actually mean in reality? Well, it can be summarized as follows. Infinity contains everything that can exist. If one follows this principle, then somewhere out there for each of us a perfect double would exist. However, while we can only enter the world of speculation in this regard, the ominous dark flow could provide us with a real clue to those structures that lie dormant beyond the horizon of observation. But what is this mysterious dark flow all about? NASA's WMAP spacecraft investigated the irregularities of the cosmic background radiation between 2001 and 2010. This almost isotropic radiation in the microwave range is a relic of the Big Bang and fills the entire universe. If one follows the common assumptions of cosmology, the proper motions of galaxy clusters relative to cosmic background radiation should be randomly distributed in all directions. The scientists were all the more surprised when they discovered that many galaxy clusters are literally pulled in one and the same direction. But that's not all. The speed of this inexplicable flow even increases with distance. Consequently, 
It seems that beyond the observable universe, there is a huge structure that literally pulls the galaxy clusters into its spell. In the meantime, 1400 galaxy clusters have been identified as participating in this dark river. Some experts believe that it's the effect of a neighboring universe or else the effects of a space-time region that is drastically different from the observable universe. Even if the exact background of the dark flow has not yet been deciphered, the exciting discovery nevertheless provides us with an important insight, namely that we are still far from having completely unraveled the cosmos. Now we want your opinion. What do you think about today's video? As always, write us your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback on our contribution in the comments below. Would you like to see more exciting videos on the topic of outer space? Then take a look at the other contributions on our channel, which you can access by clicking on one of the images here in the credits. Thanks for your interest, take care, and we'll see you next time.